Melanie was 16 years old, and then she was shot. She was killed by a drive-by killer. But from this, something very beautiful, although painful, has happened. Stay tuned. <laughs> My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. This is a program in which we're trying to bring you closer to the power of God working in your life. We have a wonderful lady with us today that's going to tell us a very poignant story, a very painful story, but a story that's filled, I believe, with a great deal of hope and a great deal of challenge for you and me to be involved even in tragedy with good things. Linda, God bless you. Thank you so very much for coming. Thank coming. you. For we, uh, I've recently spoken with somebody from South Dakota, and here you are coming all the way from San Bernardino, California. <laughs> You're right here. <laughs> Listen, you, 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 you have a very, a very painful story, and yet uh, about a very lovely young lady, a 16-year-old girl, Melanie, your daughter. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about Melanie first? Um, who was she? And... Uh, then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the tragedy, but uh, who was Melanie? Oh, Melanie, she was a very fun-loving, witty, charming young lady. Um, everyone, if you met her, you would just love to be around her. All her friends loved to be around her. And um, she uh, was very active in school. She was on the water polo team, the Ooh. swim team. Water polo, that takes <laughs> yeah. an awful lot of yeah. energy. Oh, yes, I used to love to watch her. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> But, and the swim team, and I love that too, watching her compete. I, I wanted to jump off the bleachers and yell, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You know, yeah, and, um, and she was also in cross country, but she quit that after um, a year because she said she didn't feel right leaving her friend behind. And oh. right, oh. yeah. So, so she was faster than her friend. Huh? Yes, oh, and wow. so she would run slower. And I could tell she was doing that on purpose. I told her, honey, why don't you try your best? And well, I don't want to leave my friend behind. <laughs> I and, love it. Yeah, and her friend remembered that too at Melanie's funeral services. She had mentioned that what a good friend Melanie was that she left, that she wouldn't leave her behind. And uh. um, yeah, and, and Melanie, she loved to sing. However, her voice wasn't that great. <laughs> Neither is her mother's. But <laughs> and we loved to sing. Um, and. Uh, she was just, you know, like I said, very loving. And there were times, though, that she did get upset with me because she wasn't able to do what she'd want to do. Sure, know. 16 years old. Yeah. I mean, 15, 16 teenagers are, mm -hmm. are challenging. You, you, you're trying to, your body is, is saying one thing, your peers are saying one thing, and your, your mom is saying something else. Right, right. <laughs> so she'd storm off to her room and, I hate you, mom, and slam yeah, the of door. Course, of course. And shortly after, she would come out and say, I love you, mom. Let's go to Starbucks. <laughs> oh, there you go. And then her and I would go to Starbucks. Wow, that's And uh, yes, and, and she was, like I said, very loving. She'd come up to me constantly and lean on my shoulder. She was taller than I was, or than I am. And um, she'd say, I love you, Mom, and give me a kiss on the cheek. Wow, and wow. yeah. So a real joy in your life, but, yes. but also um, two other sisters. Yes, uh huh. She they has had three a, children. Yes, uh huh. She and has an older sister. Was she was she the young, the middle of the three, or, or she was the middle, mm -hmm. middle of the three. Yes. But tell us now, okay, come on, Linda, what 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 happened? Uh, something, a tragedy occurred in the midst of this life life loving young woman. So I said she could go to this party and so on, and um, and at the party. Uh, some people, I guess they weren't invited in because it was a close party and they left. And I don't know if it's them, but um, my gut feeling is that those people had came back and started shooting at the, um, at the, the house. And as they started to shoot, my daughter was coming outside at that time and, um, and just got hit right away. She, uh, oh, yeah. wow. she was um, shot in the brain um, and so uh, she was considered uh, brain dead. Immediately. They, immediately. So mm -hmm. you were able, did you, were you able to get to the hospital quickly? 
Have yes, uh, yes. I got a phone call and um, they told me she was at St. Bernardine's, so I went there, but the police said, oh no, they took her over to Arrowhead because there was brain Another damage. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and they have specialists there. So I drove over to um, Arrowhead and um, when I got there, I realized it, it wasn't good because when I told them I was Melanie's mother, the, a girl came in. They um, handed me a paper, and usually at the hospital you have all these forms you have to fill out, while this one was just a, a little paper that said the next of kin and their name and address. And so I, I knew. Um, and it was serious. Yes. But tell us a little bit about prior to this uh, and the, the driver's license. We were in the kitchen talking and Melanie had said, oh mom, since, since she was going to be 16, she told me, oh, mom, when I get my driver's license, can, may I put the pink dot on my driver's license? And I told her, well, honey, that's your body, if that's what you want to do. Now what's the pink dot? What does that the mean? The pink dot is for donation of organs okay. and tissue donation. So you put that on your driver's license, and that, if anything should happen to you, um, they would pull up that driver's license, and that would be an indication that parts of your body could be used to give life to other people. That's right, uh-huh. Wow. But nowadays, um, you can sign up at the DMV. They have it to where you can um, check yes, and then they automatically put the dot on your driver's license. Wow. It's okay. stuck on there. Could you tell us just a little bit about what was going on in your heart and your mind at that moment as you looked at this this daughter of your I know of, my of baby. Your love and, and your life and her life, and all of a sudden, here she was. And she looked in, like an angel. Mobile. And um, they're holding her hand and praying with her. And, and um, a woman came into the hospital, and she was with One Legacy. Yeah, One Legacy is um, the organization that has uh, the people who um, contact the don donor families, uh, potential gotcha. okay, people. Okay. Um, they contact them at the hospitals gotcha. and ask if they okay. would consider organ and tissue donation. Okay, wow. Donate Life is made up of volunteers, of donor families and recipients and I'm involved with Donate Life. Okay. But One Legacy, they, um, they're they the ones that, that uh, uh, have the doctors, the transplant doctors, and, wow. and the um, the staff that um, um, asks, you know, talks to the Take family and, and explains everything to the family. And so, so this lady comes <clears throat> walking in and here's your precious daughter right in front of you, and uh, what does she ask? Oh, she asked if uh, we would consider organ and tissue donation. And so I said yes right away. You know, but in my heart, I was thinking, you know, no, that's my baby. Of course. That's my baby. But I, I said yes because I remember what she had said. And, um, and through her donation, four lives were saved. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that, would you? In a little bit uh, details of, of what, what parts of her body were used to? Well, her heart, <gasps> liver, right kidney, left kidney, and pancreas. And, were given to um, people that were dying. Yes, and the liver recipient, Angel, he had said that um, uh, in his letter that he, the, the doctors told him he only, he only had a week to live. And then he said he got the phone call. And it was a bittersweet moment because he was thankful that he had a donor, but he knew somebody had to die in order for him yes. to get, uh, to have his transplant. And um, the heart recipient, Shannon, uh, this was her second transplant. In her family, heart disease there's, runs in her family. And um, her sister had passed last year while awaiting a heart transplant in the hospital. And her father and brother also passed um, uh, um, due to the heart uh, disease that they had. And so, um, as, you know, so to me, this is a very, very important organization, um, and that's why I try to bring awareness out into the community um, uh, to to let them know. You know, there's people out there who do need help, and and with one person, one person can donate or can save up to eight lives, and uh, um, and a tissue donor can enhance the life of fifty can enhance the lives of fifty people. So um, um, I think of my baby and how she helped these people, and I am corresponding. I correspond with the liver recipient and the heart recipient, and uh, the heart recipient and I are um, communicating and trying to figure out when we can meet. And she told me I'll be able to listen to my baby's heartbeat. 
So I'm really, Oh my yeah. gosh, look at this. Listen to, yeah. oh. I'm very excited about that. I, I wish it could be today. <laughs> oh, you know, but there's a process to be able also to that touch that to heart and even to feel that heartbeat and know that this is your daughter's heartbeat. Yes, yes. Oh, Linda, what a wonderful story. Listen, I want to talk about, as a, as a Christian, uh, this sacrifice that carries for life can be a beautiful way of understanding the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. You know, he, he gave his life that we might live. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. We're going to see some beautiful dimensions of this, this heart-rendering, <laughs> in many ways, heart-rendering, really giving, the giving of life of a one person to a life of another. Well, let's go into this a little deeper. Stay tuned, please. You and I both know that these are difficult financial times, and you can imagine with the nonprofit television program, well, it's hard for people to give donations. I'm coming to you today to ask if you would perhaps think of giving us some support. Um, these are tough times, and I'm so on fire with the desire to continue this high-quality television program getting into the lives of many people. I need your help. Um, we don't have commercials. Uh, and many people think that because we're Catholic, we've got the Vatican or the bishops are giving us all the money we need, and it's not so. If you are blessed by the program, could you return a blessing to us? And remember that when we talk through the television and through the internet, we're getting to people who are perhaps no longer going to church, people who are alienated. This is a marvelous way for you to express your missionary vocation of bringing the good news of the Lord to many people. Oh, it's a powerful way. Let's, let's make sure it continues. What we do is we do interviews with people of faith. Um, I teach about the Bible. And then we have the wonderful ministry of the apps, the, the iPhone, the Android, the ability to be able to get onto telephones and talk with Get this, 10,000 instances of sharing the good news in 72 countries around the world. Wonderful things are happening as we try to catch the, the wave of the new things that are happening. Now, every year we have a financial review by an independent auditing company. So if you would like to know where the money is going, we are more than glad to send this to you. Remember. We need your help, whether it's a large gift or a small gift. We've got to continue, and you are the ones that will allow us to do that. Thank you so much. One of the things that happens in, in my experience as a priest is uh, tragedies can be uh, times that when sometimes our faith might even be shaken. Um, you know, we, where is this God that loves us so much that all of a sudden would snatch away someone that we love so much as you love, love Melanie? Could you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you went through? You mentioned before we, we started the taping that you had kind of a premonition even the night before um, this accident happened or this tragedy happened. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Being a single parent, it's life is difficult, yes. and I was having some struggles. Um, and that night, I went to bed after you know Melanie was gone. I had went to bed, um, and I got this serene feeling. This is before she. This the was accident? before. Uh huh. It was the night of the accident. The night yeah. of the accident. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, I I got this serene feeling, um, that peace that surpasses understanding, which I hadn't had in such a long time, mm. and I just felt so alive. I just really felt that God was with us, with my family, and um, and I was praising Him before I went to bed. I was praying. I was even singing and thanking Him. And I said, I just know you're going to be with us from now on, which I knew He always was, but I just felt His presence very strongly. Mm. And, uh, and so I was thanking Him for everything because I just saw our future, and I thought, oh, every, you know, everything's going to work out as, um, with my children and, and with life and with everything. And, um, and so I go to sleep that night, just 
has ha ha the happiest I've ever been when I hear my phone ring. Yeah. And by the time I got to the phone, um, there was a message they had hung up. And uh, when I listened to the message, they had said my daughter was at the hospital, that she was shot. So then I thought, oh, wait, that, that can't be my daughter. It must be somebody else. My daughter's with the person who was shot. That's what it is. Yes, yes. You know, but then I went to the hospital and, and realized it was my daughter. And I just thought, God, what, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, here you finally gave me some peace in my life. And then you do this? I didn't understand. I didn't understand. And I know our children are our children while here on earth, but they're God's children. We're all God's children. And, um, but it was very difficult when he was calling his child home yes, yes. because she's a part of me. You know, and and all. So I, I I just kept questioning him and talking with him and and asking, you know, what, what's going on? Help me to see. Help me to see. Help me to understand. You know, give me that peace again that you gave me. Why did you take it away so quickly? Um, but uh, he did give me the peace through the donation. Even though it's very painful, like you said, to touch the heart of of Melanie beating in the heart of another person right now. To listen to her heartbeat. Wow, you know, that, 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 that's part of that, that light, isn't it? I, I wonder in my own life about, about Jesus and what it means to be a Christian. A lot of times we think of it only in terms of the, the happiness and the victory and everything is fine. But there are moments of tragedy. There are moments of great loss similar to what you've experienced the most magnificent person that ever lived, the, the, the person that only did good things and was so full of life, just as you're talking about Melanie, you know, being full of life, there was Jesus so full of life, and yet Mary saw him hanging on the cross. And every time we come into church and we see that Jesus on the cross, that naked body pinned on a cross, that's tough though, isn't it? <gasps> yes, it is. But yes, it really it is. shows, that shows the depth of love and that shows the depth of our faith Mm -hmm. If I can really believe in the midst of the tragedy that God is there and I could even say thank you, Ooh, yeah. I get a good feeling. I, I get a feeling that along with the, the life that, that Melanie is able to share with these four people who would be dead today if they didn't have her, 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 her giving in their life, you've been able to find a certain sense of peace and maybe direction as you urge people to try to do this even in their own lives to put that little yellow tag or speak to the DMV and, and they can get in touch with our webpage. Melanie has a webpage, huh? We, we can, yes, we'll, she we'll, does. we'll do it through our own wordnet.tv, but people can get in touch and they can find out how they can be involved with doing. There isn't any age limit, is there, to, uh, to people that want to give their no, Money there hearts. isn't. Even old people like myself can yes. still live. <laughs> Don't ever count yourself out. <laughs> okay, okay, we can always do that. Mm -hmm. well, and even with disease, if you've had a disease in the past, um, they do, they have med medical doctors that um, uh, go through certain procedures to see who can qualify to donate ah. or to give tissue. So from my understanding, say somebody had hepatitis, um, then there might be somebody with hepatitis who needs a transplant. So oh. then they would use that person who has hepatitis that passed for the person. Ah, so so you don't be... ever count yourself out. They, Interesting. You know. Now tell us about the tissues. What are you saying about the tissues? This is, might be with people that have burns and things like that? that... Oh yes, that's one thing I wanted to do too um, in the hospital, but Melanie's father was against that. Um, they can take a little bit of skin from the back calf area, and they say they use that for the burn victims. That can go a very long way. So you can give skin, um, heart valves, um, cornea, eyes, and uh, veins. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? There's, mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm curious about this. Um, Melanie has, you make the decision that yes, to do this. Is it a special team of doctors that needs to be able to, to do this? And, and how, do you, how do you move a body from one place to another in order to allow this to happen? How did Melanie's heart uh, get to the person that needed that heart? 
Well, it was at um, at Arrowhead. They have a helicopter so it's there, so, th so they're already. Yeah, so she was alive. Well, they kept her on um, life support, and um, at midnight is when they took her. Um, so we got to walk with her up to the surgery room, oh my. and uh, and then they start operating at that time, and because uh, everything has to be fresh. It, it, yes, got gotcha. you. Yes, it, the operation has to be done quickly. Once they take, remove the person from life support, then they need to work quickly oh, to. Linda, yeah. what a what an experience, what a painful experience, and yet you've been able to turn that around and bring life. Well, thank you so much well, for sharing this. And you know, Melanie thought of others, and and uh, and so to me, this is this is what she would have wanted. You know, this was her. It's I. It's I do nothing. It's Melanie I know. that did it. But but you know. your heart was moving along with her heart, if you will. Are yeah. you with me on that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Right along with this, and now it can continue in such a beautiful way that she lives on in another another way. I'm going to ask you the tough question about dealing with the uh, the person that, that came in and shot her. And it seems like it was just a random shot, not necessarily looking at her, trying to kill her, but boom, somebody just shoots a gun and, and kills her. How do you deal with forgiving that person or dealing with that person in your life now? First, I was angry. But as time went on, I realized that um, this person obviously isn't a very happy person. They, they need God in their life. Um, and what they did, they don't know who they, they killed. I'm sure after it happened, they found out. Um, if they were shooting just to shoot, not to, to kill anybody, now they have to live for the rest of their life with that knowledge, knowing that they killed an innocent person. The seriousness. You know, if you. they were just out there playing around with a gun, you know, driving by just shooting at houses. Um, so I, I think of that, that they, you know, for the rest of their life, they have to live with that, knowing what they did. And um, until they're, they're caught, they have that thought in their head. What about and you, to, though? What about, what, what's uh, going on in your heart? Are you able to, to move in a process of perhaps letting go of the anger and letting go of and even oh, yes, being I have. willing to forgive? Being angry and, and want, I mean, I would like to see justice. Sure, of course. But it's not going to bring my baby back. It's not going to bring the, Melanie and back. And the burden of not forgiving can be something that would be that would destroy your neck me. And it, it would it would destroy. It you. would destroy me. People can't even imagine unless you've been there the kind of pain yes. Yes. that you feel inside. Yes. And so I wasn't about to let that person take away my joy. Also. Amen. Amen. There you go. Yeah. So by forgiving them and letting that go, it's helped me to be involved with Donate Life and and be here today to yes, bring awareness yes, on yes, the importance yes, yes. of organ and tissue donation. Yeah, there's 100,000 people in California on the uh, waiting list, and um, or uh, uh, not in California, nationally, and um, 100,000 uh, Over 100,000 people, people uh-huh. And uh, in California, 20% uh, of them are in California in the transplant centers. So it's, it's a need. And um, I know it's a subject people don't want to think about or talk about, you know, but it's one that they should discuss with their families. Because if Melanie didn't tell me that she wanted this done, even though I had the dot on my driver's license, I would have said no of course. because of my ignorance. Of course. And I'd, I ask people to educate themselves. And, and the dimension that, that I think is so important is, especially as Christians, this is right in line with the giving of Christ and the giving of life, that through his death, he brought life to you and to me and to the world in a beautiful, and Melanie is a beautiful example, a concrete experience of that ongoing life in a wonderful dimension. And God, he did the first transplant. Ah, he took I, a rib from Adam oh, and gave it to go, Eve. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that very much. Oh, God yeah. bless you. Well, listen, we're going to come right back. I'm going to bring in a basket of some of the prayers of people that have written in and emailed and, and, and phoned in, and, and I, I really would appreciate it if you'd pray with them. Would you do that? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Please stay tuned. We're going to be right back. I need to come to you to ask a special request. We need your financial help. I know that these are difficult financial times and you are struggling too. 
but I so want to allow this television ministry, this internet ministry, this, this applications on the telephones to continue. I need your help. A lot of people think that because we're Catholic, we've got the Vatican or the bishops that are giving us the money we need. It's not true. I need your help. Please, whether it's a small gift or a large gift, would you please share with us the missionary call of bringing the good news to all people around the world. We've got a powerful way of bringing blessings to people, even more powerful than what might happen in a church. I can get to those people that aren't going to church. Please, be generous. Allow us to continue, allow us to be able to do mighty things for the Lord. Thank you so much. Linda, thank you very much for coming and sharing about, uh, about your life, your experience, and also the beautiful the giving that, that Melanie gave. You, you, you've touched my heart in a good way, and I know that you've touched many people. But one of the blessings of our ministry is that we've, um, we get people that contact us, and I really relish that. Uh, not only do I talk with people like yourselves, but we get phone calls, we get emails, we get letters. And people are sharing some of their own pain and their struggles. One of the other ways of their communicating is that we do a, a thing on the web page, which is going to give information about, about how people can get more involved with, with your topic. But um, I do a daily app on the iPhone and the Android, um, and it's also present on the web page, a scripture reflection each day. It's called I God Today. So, they can see that and then they can get in touch with us too. So that's way, some of the ways of communication. And, and I speak to you too, if you would think of making sure that you support us. This is a, this wonderful story, this ability to get many people to know about it is many ways dependent on you and your generosity. So please, would you be generous with helping us to get this story across? But look at here, let, 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 let's, let's pray with some of these here. Here's Donna from California. Um, Danny had a stroke, you know, and wants to pray for that. Lupe in California, cataracts. Oh boy, to pray for those things like that. Um, Connie from California, um, prayers for her eyes also. Dottie from California, Phyllis and Dottie need prayers for good health. Um, and here we have an email that comes to us uh, I'd like to pray for my fiance, my mom, my dad, my sister, and uncle. Lord, come with your healing power. Bless these people. Allow the strength of your love to overcome any kind of problems and bring healing and love. And bless Linda and continue to let her example shine out. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.